Russ Mitchell, good afternoon, sir. Welcome into the game in T-Town. Let's kick some tires and light some fires, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. I'm driving down the road today, <laughs> and I flip over on, on a talk radio station. It was it was, a, it was this station here, and it was another host uh-huh. talking about Russ Mitchell uh, taking a little shot at Nick Saban. You okay? I mean, uh, every, every, every chance I get, man. He's talking about these freshmen. And, uh, Look, if, 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 if I'm not going to take a shot at Nick, nobody's taking shots. So someone's got to take shots. You don't get a free ride through life. I don't care who you are or what you've accomplished. Nobody is so big that they can't take a shot now and again. Yeah, but he said he played more freshmen that he, he thinks. Uh, I think he wanted to do a study or somebody to do a study that he's played he's more freshmen. He's always got an excuse, man. It's the left foot or it's the right foot. Why this? Blame that. Look, most of the time, I'll tell you, the cat knows exactly what he's doing, whether it's trying to distract attention away from something that, you know. He's trying to recruit, or, or, Russ. <laughs> or he's trying to recruit or he's trying to do whatever he wants, you know. But, I, I you know, I'm not going to say, you're ranked number one in America, you know. There's not a lot of room for whining. Just get up there and, you know, not respect the process. All right. Look, not a great performance in Starkville, but I'd love to have your opinions. No, I mean, again, this is a this, they have a, a decent run defense, and you're on the road, and this is a team that has not been challenged. You know, I mean, in the past, during the golden era, when we had so many great teams, you know, and there were games Alabama, you know, they were always favored, but it was like two or three or five, and. You know, and you saw this team struggle against a good competition, which is what you would expect. And by the time you got to November, this was a, a fighting unit that was, you know, lean and mean and trim to the bone. Y'all have been feasting on crap because that's what the SEC is this year, you know, and, and it makes you soft. And this, it doesn't matter how hard saving coaches and, you know, how intense the practices are. If you play soft teams the whole year, then suddenly you go on the road and all those cowbells are going off and you're playing a good defense and they jump up and y'all can't convert on second. If running isn't easy for this Alabama team, then suddenly you can't convert on on third down conversion. You know, go look at the Clemson game. Go look at Clemson. You converted 13% on third down. This game midway through the fourth quarter, 25% on third down. You know, but- so I... I I, I worry about that when it comes to this team. But, Russ, maybe that was the best thing that could ever happen to Alabama is struggling yeah. against Mississippi State where they where they sort of kind of go back into the meeting room going, okay, now you got our attention, Coach. Tell us where we need to correct our problems. Yes, yes, and and, and God bless before Auburn because you saw what Auburn did to the Georgia run defense, the run offense. Good Lord. Georgia, there was a point late in the fourth quarter – before the Auburn kids were just partying, where Georgia had rushed the ball 30 times for 28 yards, 0.9 yards per carry on 30 rushing attempts. That was Auburn's run defense at home. And y'all are going to be there in a couple weeks left. So you're absolutely right. I will say very impressed with Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter you know, the kid's still not, a, you know, an NFL grade, but he's still a kid. Sophomore, he is so steady. You know, he reminds me of another national championship SEC quarterback. Who's that? Matt Flynn. Much better leg. Much better leg. But in terms of, and, and he's not yet at Flynn's playmaking and, and checking on progression level. But Flynn was a fifth-year senior, right? But in terms of poise, Flynn was 23 years old, and Jalen Hurts looks like he never get. You know, remember, uh, Flynn would throw a pass, and it didn't matter if it was a 50-yard touchdown or an, inc- or an incompletion. He would look at the sidelines totally calm and composed. And that's what I see with Jalen Hurts, and that's very impressive for such a young kid. Russ, uh, let, me, let me say this. Uh, if this young man continues to show that, he goes to Auburn – and then finds a way to win that game, goes to the SEC title game, and then puts this team on in through the college football playoffs, which I think if Alabama can get there, 
Uh, I, I think they'd be the big favorite to to win this thing. I, I think the biggest test is Auburn and then the SEC EC title game. I'd love to see some of these matchups in college football playoffs. Uh, the criticism, it will go away for Jalen Hurts because locally yes. we still hear a lot of rumblings. And listen, Russ, I'll, I'll be guilty. Uh, I'm, I'm probably uh, <laughs> one of the big critics uh, of, of Jalen Hurts. Uh, but the young man showed me something in Starkville last Saturday night. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, he put that team on his shoulders and won the game. Yes, he did. Now, Ridley helped, too, right? But, I mean, you got a quarterback, Scott. It's a yin and a yang. you got to have someone to throw to. you got to have someone to catch. LSU's had great receivers for a decade. They're all playing in the NFL. <laughs> they never had a quarterback, you know? So, uh, he, but he put that team on his shoulders, and Jalen Hurts he made some mistakes early, but he won that game in the fourth quarter. He, he, I'll tell you this. Let me go a step further. If Jalen Hurts does the same thing at Auburn, does the same thing in Atlanta, and does the same thing in two games in the college football playoff, he gets my Heisman pick. Yeah, Russ, and, and, and you know what? That's that's a big topic of conversation because I know Baker Mayfield is getting a lot of love, but he plays in a, in a league where they don't play any defense. And, uh, you know, I've got a Heisman vote too. And, and, and I've, I've been thinking about if he goes to Auburn and he goes to the SEC title game, he deserves to at least be in New York City. Yeah, and I mean, this is the shame that we have with the voting taking place before the playoffs, right? Because it's just so instrumental in terms of the outcome. The vote should take place in the middle of January. But, you know, they don't want to get in. They don't, they don't want to interrupt the NFL playoffs. So, you know, I, I think that, uh, I mean, because remember, the Heisman was created. The, the Bulls were just exhibitions. So the Heisman came at the end of the season, but now we have a playoff. So, you know, anyway, be that as it may, I would just say Baker Mayfield has played better opposition to this point than, than, than Jalen has. But now that it's starting to get into November, Alabama played a good LSU team or I should say an improving LSU team and improving or a decent Mississippi state team. They'll play a good Auburn defense and then a good Georgia team and then the playoffs. So, you know, I, I, I want to watch Jalen's progression. But I'll say this also, all the Auburn fans out there that say uh, carry on should be a, a Heisman pick, no, he shouldn't. Very impressed with that young man. Very impressed with what he's been able to accomplish. But he carries the ball way more than anybody else in the SEC, even Snell at Kentucky. If you look at yards per carry, he's only 17th in the SEC by yards per carry. There's no way that's a Heisman. All right, Russ, let, I want to go through some of these coaching stops, man. When we talk about the SEC, and I mean, you've, you've got more that we'll add to the conversation. Let's go through these one at a time here from your perspective. Lead SEC columnist, College Football News, Russ Mitchell here with us. Let's stop at Florida let, let, because that seems to be a very, very hot job and a lot of conversation. What do you think happens here? Well, I mean, it's one of the top 10 jobs in college football just simply because of the recruiting. You know, I'm saying Chip Kelly, I don't know. His offense would be nice and it's what the fans want. I don't know if he has the makeup to coach in the, in the South or is particularly for the SEC. Florida is probably one of the, you know, coastal outliers for the SEC, but I still don't necessarily see it. you got to pick Dan Mullen here. He has the relationship with the athletic director. He's still in his 40s. That's crazy to think about. Dan Mullen is still only in his 40s. He's got experience, you know, he, uh, uh, coaching at, for, at Florida, he, he's proven he can coach not only in the Power Five but in the SEC and be successful at Starkville. So, you know, it's time for this guy to get a real job. No disrespect to Mississippi State, but it's time, and Florida would be a great hire. See, I agree with you, Russ, but we were talking with a guy from down in Gainesville earlier he said that Dan Mullen is hated down there by a lot of different people. And I'm like, why? Why? I guess he rubs some people the wrong way with, with maybe his attitude a little bit. I yeah, didn't they have see a it. New, uh, they have a new athletic director now, has a great relationship with him. Sure he does. He did rub a few folks the wrong way. I, you know, Ultimately, I think that it's about hiring the right coach who has Power 5 experience, preferably SEC experience, who knows dynamic offenses that can adjust his team to play with what he has. And he's proven he can do that. He had them ranked number one in America. What is wrong? You know, hire Dan Mullen. All right, let's go to Tennessee here for a couple of minutes. These folks are all focused on John Gruden. I don't know if that happens, but I'd love to hear what you hear, what you think. 
Yeah, I mean, the whole idea of Gruden, Gruden, the last time he coached, Bush was president. You know, and I don't care what you do and how good you are at it. If Nick Saban took 10 years off of coaching and then decided to coach, I don't know, even if he came back to college, did you realize how much the college football game, how much college football has changed in the last 10 years since the, since the rule changed on how we put the ball back in? A ton. I mean, it's, it's changed so much, and you would have to spend so much money to get Gruden. His record, by the way, in the NFL, I know he won a Super Bowl, but his record was like barely over 500. If you're going to do that, back up the Brinks trucks to Blacksburg and go get Justin Fuente. He uh, he has he was the ACC Coach of the Year. He's now proven he can coach in the Power Five. He's only making three million bucks a year, and his staff is not making very much at all. And remember, coaches like to take care of their staff so the staff stays. And he knows Memphis, which is the biggest recruiting fertile ground for the state of Tennessee. Great point. You know, I think. I think Fuente would be a spectacular, and he's only 41 years old. You could have him for 25 years. But you know, that Knoxville town, man, that rubs off on people, man. It's uh, That's a dump, man, when you talk about trying to recruit people to Knoxville. I mean, it is, man. You go around on that campus, and you go around to the other SEC campus, Tennessee's sort of standing out there all by themselves. I mean, there's a lot of pretty places in the SEC. Knoxville is not one of them. No comment. Okay. I don't want you to tick your 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 little kids up there in Knoxville off. Let me go to Arkansas. What do you think is going to happen here? Obviously, Jeff Long out earlier this week. I think it's time to go back to defense at Arkansas. They, you know, they 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 seem to be able to recruit Mike and the better defensive talent. You know, and I I think Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator at LSU, would be a great hire here. You know, he's ready for that step as a head coach. Uh, and, you know, he's not going to get an elite position. Uh, You know, he's not going to get a Florida or, or, you know, an Alabama or even an LSU kind of job. But, you know, he's ready for that next step, and I think Arkansas would be a good pick. What do you think is going to happen at Ole Miss? I'd say keep Luke. You know, don't give him a five-year contract. Give him a one-year contract. And the reason why I say that is the guy is Ole Miss through and through, his dad, his brother, the whole family bleeds the old men. You're not. You're, there's six jobs coming open in the SEC. You're not going to be. You know, an old miss is near the bottom of the list. And with the sanctions, you're not going to get the best anyway. So why not give him like they did with Sickle up at, at Ohio State? Why not go Luke for another year? And if you don't do that, I say go to Troy and get Neil Brown. And I know he's young. He's only 37, but. You know, he had three years of uh, OC experience with Tuberville at uh, Texas Tech. He had two good years as an offensive coordinator at Kentucky. And look what he's done at Troy. He's great with quarterbacks, dynamic offense, which fits in with what uh, Hugh left at Ole Miss. So I say Luke, and if not Luke, then do Neil Brown. What happens to Kevin Selman in Texas A&M? Oh, he's done. Out Kevin's of there. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was I, feeling the heat when he was winning. From his board of regents. Yeah, and I mean they're going to lose this. We talked about this two weeks ago, right? They lost to Auburn, then they lost to State. They could lose to Old Miss, and then they got LSU. They haven't beaten LSU since they joined the conference, and they got to go to Death Valley to play. So, you know, he's done. I say, is it too soon for Greg McElwain? You know, I mean, A and M is a really strong track record of spending money. I mean, they just bumped their uh, stadium to over a hundred thousand. They've got good facilities. You know, it, maybe it's a little too soon, but, you know, they, they're they trying to get Jimbo Fisher. Fisher. If they don't, that's not going to happen. I, if they don't, Jay Moorhead, the offensive coordinator at, at Penn State, I think he'd be a good fit there. Scott Frost has a really dynamic offense. He'd be a good fit too, But uh, the UCF coach. But he's going home to Nebraska because they're getting rid of Riley. All right, so you were talking about Dan Mullen earlier. If he leaves, what happens at State? Well, you know, I, I think that, again, Aranda's a possible good choice. Another one is Manny Diaz, who's now the defensive coordinator at Miami. Remember, it, Miami State's known for their tough defensive play, right? We saw that just four days ago, uh, five days ago. And Manny had some great defenses when he was there. He knows how to coach and how to recruit at State. You know, I think that would be a good hire. If not that, if not 
uh, Danny, or excuse me, if not Manny Diaz, then I'd say uh, go to Troy and, and try to get uh, Neil Brown. He's about the same age as uh, Dan was when they hired Dan as the offensive coordinator out of uh, Florida. Hey, Russ, final question. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to catch up next week, but if if we're not able to because of the holiday, and hopefully we can try to catch up, uh, if I can put you on the spot on a Thursday, about 10 days away, uh, nine days away from Alabama and Auburn, who would you pick? I'll go on the radio on Thanksgiving. We're not going to be on, though, Russ. Oh, you're not going to be on. No, I'll talk football on Thanksgiving. Yeah, but, you want my pre- prediction of the Auburn Alabama game? Yeah, I mean, and don't don't let Nick Saban know. But we've been talking about Alabama and Auburn, and not Alabama Mercer. <laughs> I mean, oh, hey Russ, hey Russ, hey, so will you break funny. will you break down the Mercer game for us, please? Yeah, no, no. You realize I watch every single game, literally, literally every single game. I will even watch the Alabama Mercer game. But I'm going to watch it at 1.30 in the morning on fast forward. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, I got to tell you, I think Alabama wins this game. I think they'll win this game. But, brother, it's going to be a lot like the Mississippi State game. It's going to be close. It's going to be a nail-biter. And if, you know, if Stidham can get the passing game going, if he can find enough holes, you know, they, I don't think they'll get a running game. This is the problem. Uh I think Alabama will do a, a decent job stuffing Terry on. Uh, he runs aggressively, and I know they got some other backs, but he's obviously a big guy. He runs like a four-net style, and I think that that plays more into Alabama's strength. Uh, I think they'll have to need lean more on Stidham. Uh, ultimately, though, I think Auburn will be able to stop Alabama's strength. So it comes down to, you know, Get him against Alabama's defense versus Jalen Hurts and, and Ridley. And in a clutch, very tight ball game, I like Alabama to stick it away in the end. It's Russ Mitchell CFB. Russ Mitchell CFB. Happy Thanksgiving, Russ. Uh, hopefully we can try to find a 12-minute window in your busy schedule next week to, to talk a little Iron Bowl. But uh, if, if not, hey, let's man, do, let's, We'll talk about it offline, but let's. Friday. We'll figure out some time. Like okay. That. Happy Thanksgiving, Russ. I appreciate you, man. Me too. Hey, listen, happy Thanksgiving to y'all. And I know you got a lot of heat and everything that all the folks outside of Alabama are throwing on you, but I just want to remind you that we got a lot of hungry neighbors, a lot of hungry folks, and uh, you're, I can guarantee your local food bank would love some help at Thanksgiving time. So, you know, it can just take a couple minutes this week to think about the neighbors who are struggling and hungry and we help out our own in the South. So, uh, hey, hey, and, and, and let me uh, let me also say this. Alabama's already beat Auburn. I don't know if you know about a local drive, but they do a big competition where Auburn students and Alabama students compete, and they raise money for the local food bank. Alabama, uh-huh. ra- they, got, they had more pounds than Auburn did. They beat them last night. So they had more pounds of food donated. They go out, and it's about six weeks. They go out, and they get food, and they donate it. Uh, Alabama got them last night. So the final weigh-in was last night. And Alabama's already beat Auburn one time in, in the food drive. So uh, that's it. Uh, well, that's good. So, hey, Russ. That's I, good. You, you can find your food bank online and give them five bucks, too. You don't have to bring them food. So, you know, I, I, it, I've, I've gone hungry in my life and you know, when I was younger. And you just got to make sure you uh, take care of your folks. So there you go. Russ Mitchell, CFB. Russ, I appreciate you, man. Have a great week. All right. Y'all take care.